You're listening to the Outdoors Group podcast. This podcast is a call to arms to get children and young people outside again. It's your one-stop shop for all things outdoor, child, young person and education related. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're delighted to be joined by Hannah and Woody, two of our pastoral tutors at the Outdoors School. Both started their teaching careers in mainstream schools before coming to join us in a rather different educational setting. They've come to talk to me today about the differences between working in mainstream and working in an outdoor setting with a very different approach. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Hi. No worries. <laughs> uh, let's start at the beginning. Why did you both decide to go into teaching? What attracted you to it as a career? Uh, for me, I sort of didn't have a clue what I wanted to do when I left school. Um, didn't really put much thought into it. Did five years in just work. Um, and I always found myself... Uh, training other members of staff and um, yeah sort of looking after the younger members of staff and I used to do quite a bit of child mining so enjoyed that as well so I thought it would be a a good career to go down rather than actually having yeah instead of a job I wanted a career. So when did you start it? You started later then? Yeah so I did yeah five years out so when I started uni I was 22 23, so I was a mature student by the end, okay. which was not a very nice label. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel sorry for the mature students, because some of them are only like six months older yeah. than the rest yeah. of them. <laughs> and they get looked up to, looked it's up. so hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's a mixture of things, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I was younger, mm. so quite cool. um, I, but I'm one of eight children, and so naturally I'm the third oldest in my family and I've got my youngest at the moment is nine but the sister is nine years old so I've had a proper range of ages from my whole life Mm. and I've always enjoyed with spending time with children it's been really fun and it's something that I'm quite naturally accustomed to I suppose um but also I was an absolute nightmare in school, and I'm not afraid to admit that. I was exactly um, the I same. Was, <laughs> <laughs> mentored by my head teacher, daily chat ins and that. And I think what I struggled with in school was I was a lot of the time bored or yeah. seeking some form of entertainment. So mm. I used to be in my own entertainment. And I think I used to, I, I think I used to find myself hilarious. Um, but Were you like class clown? Oh, yeah. But the teachers oh, were not too. happy yeah. with me. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I there was always a, I want to do something for the children like me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Do you find mm. education a little bit boring? Or the more typical education yeah. a little bit boring? Um, and I, I wanted to be the teacher that I would have wanted yeah. in that time. Yeah. So I think that's why I went that's into it. Into it. Oh, awesome. I don't know about you, but I've... I also find that I love learning new stuff. Yeah, as well. I love it. And yeah. like teaching is such a good excuse to like learn, learn loads of new things. stuff. Yeah. And like just pass it on to, yeah, like younger people. Like, I, I love learning. Yeah, things. I love learning new things, which is funny that we didn't like it in. No, but I was exactly the same as you. Like I, yeah, I I'm dyslexic. I've I've been diagnosed with dyslexia since I was seven, and I sh- wish I'd never found out to be honest, because I used it as an excuse. But, yeah, I was just like, no, I'm not doing it, you know, and would refuse to participate, but would just be an idiot. Um, but again, as you said, I found myself hilarious. And <laughs> <coughs> Always in we are. Yeah. I find you hilarious. Did you guys, um, <laughs> did you plan to go into primary or secondary or kind of SEN? Like, what was your plan at first? Mine was primary. Okay. And I specialised in art. Oh, okay. It's so very creative. So my original plan was to do some form of drama therapy, okay, art therapy, and that was my um, general idea initially. Mm. Uh, however, the courses I couldn't find the right course for myself, so yeah. I went initially into like child psychology. Mm. And okay, as a course. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. What about you? you yeah, no, you? I was. I did a primary B Ed. Okay. Um, and yeah, I just. I, to be honest, I didn't have enough qualifications to... Do to, secondary? To, well, to be on the course full stop. Oh, OK. Um, I had to to talk my way on mm. with the experience that I've sort of gathered during my five years out of education. Mm. Um, yeah, I think I had less than half the UCAS points I needed. Oh, OK. But, um, but you talked your way on. Yeah, I sort of found... 
an avenue that I could possibly get on. Mm. And that was, yeah, specialising in ICT. I'd just done like two years in sales and a lot of it was computer based. But to be honest, put me in front of a computer and um, I'd rather be out in the woods. (laughs) So once you guys have done your qualifications, where did you start working? So I did it in Bristol. I started in in inner city schools in Bristol. Okay. Very eye opening. I was about to say, give me an idea of what it was like working in a mainstream school. So the first one, I did my, I was a student there, and then I got hired. It was very. uh, The first year was so challenging. Mm. I had, I was working in a school. I don't know if I can name areas. Uh, you'd probably say somewhere in Bristol, but so, just don't in inner school. city school in yeah, Bristol. Yeah. Um. The amount of children, I I was the only one form, year group. So mm. there was only one class in my year group. Everyone else had multiple years, okay. so multiple classes. Yeah. Therefore, I had the biggest class. Yeah. And I would say seventeen out of thirty one ish had huge safeguarding concerns, had massive traumatic backgrounds. Yeah. I won't go into war, but it was was quite an impoverished area. Yeah. Massive trauma. The amount of social, emotional, Mm. mental health issues that I had to fumble my... I didn't know what I was doing. You were straight in the deep end. Really Yeah. The amount of behaviour... A really complex behaviour that I had to try and take on. I didn't take it on very well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I did that for my first year. I didn't make it to the full year because it was so stressful. Mm. The the pressure of having to put do so much curriculum. Mm. There was a saying back then in the Ofsted that's like, uh, Ofsted was saying every minute without teaching something specific is a wasted minute. So it was 10 minutes spag, next 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. Times table, is, yeah. yeah. And these kids were coming in, having not eaten, having had I don't know a family member just taken to the police, yeah, being arrested in mm. front of them, yeah. Um, all sorts of stuff. Mm. Um, they're not in a place to come in and do spag. Not in the right place. Yeah, that's what I didn't like was the whole like uh, hamster wheel sort of effect mm. that you're just running, 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 trying to, you know constantly filling trying to fill seconds in the day with what yeah Ofsted felt was or what you know we were being guided to sort of yeah. deliver and it was just a bit like why and that's yeah that's sort of why I stepped away in the end but I yeah what was your first school like so mine was very different it was part of a huge academy a federation um my first day was was without learners without the children and um we went to sandy park and we had the the whole like all the teachers there throughout the federation okay. it's like 16 schools so wow. it was like 400 teachers and the the ceo was talking about the shop floor and stuff and i was like what is this oh, like so what, weird. what, what yeah. have i signed up for like um but yeah it was mine was a tiny little village school uh one form entry I think it was actually 0.5 entry okay so two classes in each but mine was I just had year four I was the only class um, only class that just had one year group but not quite as, as drastic as yours but I had four five maybe six uh, SEN uh, mm-hmm. learners with, with, with SEN and um, I had no TA and I was the only class with a TA um, yeah, I I did a lot of my practical side of my course mm. with the Federation and I don't know, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure I'd choose the Federation again mm. just because, yeah, it just felt like it was uh, trying to give the effect of like a conveyor belt of, of just learning in a particular type of way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I to be honest, I I only lasted, I think it was a term, and yeah, I'm not afraid to say that I ended up having a mental health breakdown. Mm. Um, yeah, I just the school before I got there had had sixty percent change in staff and yeah, new head, and I just don't think 
like they were really lovely people, but I don't think they were quite prepared for an NKT. Mm. Um, I was going to say something similar. Yeah, mm-hmm. and also I, I, before doing the course, I'd never had any experience. I'd yeah. done my twenty days or ten days experience, which the course required me to do, but I, I you know, I hadn't been a TA. Yeah. So I hadn't probably set myself up in the best way, or, yeah, I wasn't as prepared as some might be, but yeah, I just. Yeah, it just wasn't quite the right no. school for me. They expected you just to hit the ground running. Yeah, and yeah, and when I sort of told them I was struggling, and I was doing like easily seventy hour weeks, mm. um, didn't really have much of a a life outside of work, and yeah, when when I told my head that I was struggling, she told me to work more more hours to sort of come back the different bits and bobs that I was struggling yeah. with. So. I don't yeah. know if it, this is a running theme with mainstream, but maybe me and you are the similarities are a bit too similar. <laughs> yeah. Because actually, as an I did my training year with them, and yeah. with a lead tutor who was brilliant, yeah. supported me, and I flourished in that year mm. with them, and that's mm. that, that's the same school. Yeah. But as soon as I was on my own and left to work it all out, yeah. again, struggled, reached out to what was the mentor back then. Mm. They used to make me send in planning on a Saturday to help. There was no support in what I was asked about yeah. behaviour, SEN mm. support. Mm. It was, what's your planning? Show me your planning. Mm. Do it on a Saturday. Mm. And again, working about 80 hours. And again, mental health <laughs> really yeah. cropped yeah. up in that yeah. year. Yeah. And I just thought, if this is teaching, I don't want any yeah. to well, do made mistake. Yeah. So I went into nursery school after that. So I did oh, early nice. years as okay. a preschool teacher yeah. without the uh, pressures of... I was the lead practitioner in that room, yeah. so I was in charge, basically. No one was telling me yeah. what to do, and kind of worked it all out myself, mm. and it was a lot less pressured, yeah. which was great. Yeah, yeah, really. But, yeah. I had a similar sort of... So, I, when I walked away from teaching, I was like, oh, never again. Yeah. I felt like I completely made... Because, to be honest, and I, you know, I was sort of backed up in a lot of ways, because out of my cohort, when we started, I think it was... 100, 150 students started okay. my cohort at my university and there was only 60 of us left by the end. Wow. And um, and out of those 60 now, I I know a handful that are still teaching. Ooh, but crazy. I don't want to just bash mainstream. No. Then, but it just, yeah, wasn't, wasn't right for me. So I completely yeah. walked away and I was like, yeah, this clearly isn't the right thing mm. for me. And I went into labouring and, okay. and manual work, landscape gardening and stuff mm. like that. Um, and, yeah, it was in the landscape gardening. I was like, oh, I actually love being outdoors all the time. I wonder if I could teach outdoors. And I've looked at forest school, did my forest school qualification, and then went and led in a mainstream school Doing for school. 400 kids. And yeah. that, you know, that didn't bother me at all. Yeah. You know, I... I loved the pressure there because it was the correct sort of pressure for me. Yeah. But um but yeah, I you know, I swore off classroom classroom work yeah. again. But yeah, so when this because I actually came away from forest school because it didn't pay very well and I went back into um manual labour and then yeah, this opportunity popped I was just up. about to say there's a beautiful segue to my next question, yeah. which is why did you decide to apply to work for the outdoor school? What was it that you guys were hoping that you'd find here? <clears throat> well, well I, I had a I had a postcard come through my door. Did you? Yeah, so so oh, the, you they, live near, yeah, you? Well, yeah. I live in the village and the they were having an open day and so they were popping postcards through everybody's door to sort yeah. of say, Come and have a look what we're doing in yeah, the village. Yeah. And um I'd done a forest school t- taste today with the outdoors group and I was like, Oh, I love this company, it's well cool. Like, mm. you know, looked online and you know, had a little look through the sort of um, what what it was all about and really liked the look of it. And when, yeah, the postcard came through, my partner said to me, she says, if you don't go for that job, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. That's a bit of a sign, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I was one of those lucky teachers that had to, again, really struggled with the pressures of 
the more academic based side of school mm. I was in and out of supply work I did work for nursery I worked for an education uh, charity called Inter University which is wonderful if you haven't heard of it we no I've not heard about it's them it's really good it okay. gets like teenagers into that wouldn't normally get into university helps them, get in. helps them oh, that's amazing. Or, like, that's yeah. awesome. or look into different approaches so there was lots of field work there I used to take teenagers on field trips, like camping, mm. these Bristolian teenagers <laughs> with white shoes <laughs> going yeah. camping, and oh my god, I was with them for a month over yeah. the summer, and you'd see them flourish. Yeah. Um. But again, that's what I was saying is that when I was supply working down in, I've just moved down back to Devon, so I was doing supply work. Um, and I was one of those lucky teachers that got to stick around with COVID while everyone else was furloughed. Mm. <laughs> so we had all the key worker like, children yeah. and those that were vulnerable. Mm. Um, and so we had a complete mixture of year groups. We had early years up to year six. Mm. And they kind of, that was the first time that I was in a mainstream school that they said, do what you got to do. Yeah. And they had a forest school area mm. and we would take them out and pretty much every other day or yeah. every day we'd be outside doing yeah. heaps of learning outside and it was just seeing what those early years could teach the yeah. older ones and the older ones could teach the middle ones or yeah. whatever it was but it was just so lovely to see how learning could be because mm. we catered for all of them yeah. in different ways mm. so uh, I saw I applied for the outdoor school um and then had uh, got or put on the waiting waiting list <laughs> for about six months, and then eventually joined in no, December. I think it was November, one year. And it was just exactly. It wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> but I've always uh, yeah again wanted to do for a school. Yeah, liked what they were saying. The approach on social, emotional, mental health. Yeah, that was what. I was getting so frustrated with mm. the mainstream. Mm. Yeah. And it was just exactly the ethos that I had come to yeah. in my I, time in education. Yeah, I found that when I was when I was working in forest school, that actually, like, the learners who... Well, the children who struggled the, the most in their classrooms, they were like our shining lights in forest mm. school. Yeah. And, and I was like, well, if that's what it's like in mainstream, what's it going to be like when... It's constantly outdoors, yeah. and yeah, I just thought that that was the main draw for me. It was just yeah. the fact that it was outdoors all the time. All the, time yeah. the fact that it was like learning based on like projects and stuff like mm. that, and contextual sort of learning, tangible learning, and yeah, that was yeah. I just thought that was really yeah. that was the way I wanted to be educated. Yeah, yeah. Um, because yeah, I just didn't get. The, the mainstream model, as it were, I don't, and that's why I think I was so naughty. <laughs> yeah. I didn't care what conjunction was. Or. <laughs> yeah. I'm so not sure I know what a conjunction is. <laughs> yeah. so, um, I guess the big question is: Did it? Has it lived up to your expectations? Like, what did you initially find when you came to work here? <laughs> I myself needed rewilding. I yeah. don't know if you've used that term. Well, I'm sure you have. Yeah. Rewilding. I think Chev's used it in a previous podcast, but in case people haven't listened, do you want to explain what you mean by that? I think in mainstream, again, don't want to bash it, but mainstream, it you are put through a conveyor belt mm. and you produce similar, it's for similar like-minded people that mm. are able to sit down and listen. Yeah. who are able to follow rules and you've done this behaviour, therefore that means this. Mm. And there's a clear cause and effect. Yeah. Very regimented. You will do this lesson or you will miss out on break yeah. time, that kind of thing. Um, and I think when I first joined the outdoor school, it was a massive shift of my thinking. Mm. These learners needed regulating. They needed mm. to learn, learn who they, they were. They needed to learn really learn social skills yeah. and how to be part of a community and what that looks like and I think the pressures that were automatically put onto you in mainstream have you done your spag have you done your I don't know science it's science week have you have you put everything up on the website mm. of what they've done and they would be checking have you marked your books every lunchtime yeah here there's you don't have that similar pressure yeah the idea of what is success is 
very bespoke yeah. and very down to the learners. Mm. For instance, I remember in the first year, so-and-so got really angry and instead of throwing a stick at me, he threw a stick at a tree. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that that's no, the that's kind of yes. the idea of success mm. is mm. very different. And I think rewilding, getting used to not being constricted and putting into a box, actually having that freedom to be able to think outside of the box. There's a problem here. How are we gonna solve yeah. it? And there's gonna be a million different ways that you try. Mm. So re yeah, rewilding, how can I summarise it in a sentence? I suppose it's Getting back to the roots, isn't it? And exploring mm. nature. Um, Is it like unlearning? Unlearning. Kind of habits that you've picked up. Yeah. 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 Which I think, and I still see it with new practitioners that join this school. Mm. They step foot and go. It takes a minute for them to. There's no rules. Yeah. There's uh, not. I don't mean there's no rules. Yeah. There are, do you see <laughs> yes. what I mean? There's, yeah. There's no clear. This is what you need to do, yeah. and this is how when you need to do it. Yeah. Um, and I think that is really difficult. Yeah, it's a challenging uh, transition. Yeah, mm. I think it is. I've totally, I'm totally rewilded now. I've gone past rewilding. Feral's definitely the right word for a lot of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. What, so what, it was. Yeah. When we first started, I um. Because I was, I was, there was a bit of a cohort of us that came mm. in, and um, we had our like price training, and we had our all of our, um, tran, you know, our Your SEN training, yeah, SEN training, paperwork stuff, mm. and that was a really nice way to sort of get into it. But if I'm honest, I when I hit the ground, mm. I was like. What on earth is all this? Nothing, <laughs> nothing prepares you. Um, I don't think. Yeah, and it was just, you know, we. I remember having chats about the learners and stuff, and I was like, okay, this this is like looking through the EHCP, which always makes them, you know, I think when you haven't got the context of learner, it is always a little bit like, oh my word. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was, it was, pretty mad. Like oh, yeah. you know, it was the yeah the, the way the timetable was and. Yeah, it took me a minute to sort of understand that actually if it takes, you know, the whole morning for for yeah, this child to to get be able Regulated. to be in the group, yeah. that's that's fine. Like yeah. um, you know, that's the reason why we're we've got a lot of staff. Yeah. Is to sort of facilitate that. But um yeah, I I was pretty mind blown for the first couple of weeks. I was yeah. like, Wow, we this is Fair, different. Yeah, feral now. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, so now a few years in, and you guys are obviously settled and pros. Uh, can you tell me what you love about teaching here? Like, yeah, what what are the I things think that... what you said about it being a team. I have never worked in mm. such a in Main Street. And you're mm. left with thirty children. You can't physically give all of those thirty children time that they yeah. need. So having what. Working in a team with a range of different skills that mm. bring different experiences, that bring different insights. Mm. That child might be acting like that because of this, this and this. Have we tried that? Or yeah. they might recognise different patterns. It is just bliss. I think mm. you see a massive, huge impact on the learners. Mm. Um, and also, like you said, the fact that if it takes an hour for that learner to ground that is absolutely fine yeah. so a lot of the time my day is spent regulating co-regulating in a hammock or <laughs> co-regulating in the stream yeah. and we're going can, do you reckon you can make the, le- the letters sh- for that makes the sound sh- in the stream as it's going past and they've got a stick and they're trying yeah. to spell out letters I just love the, f- I, the fact that my day is built up on constantly thinking outside of the box mm. there's a problem how am I going to solve yeah. it and getting the children showing the children that they really we care for them yeah. they're safe it's a positive thing we just are there to make sure that they're okay um yeah which I've never had before in a job and it just feels like you're doing something really meaningful yeah which is great that's nice yeah I think similar for me really yeah the teamwork that is a massive aspect of it it's you know the relationships that we've got 
amongst staff and and also with the learners like because mm. we could be with some of these learners for like half a decade yeah. and it's just yeah that's that's awesome you yeah. know some of the, and you get some like absolutely magic moments in that time oh, like yeah. you've got sometimes it can be like oh my god what am I doing yeah. <laughs> this child just you know um, they constantly want to throw something at me but then you get the other end of it where they like yeah they overcome a, a fear or a or like a barrier to their learning and it's just like the the look in their face and the sort of the feeling that you get as well because you've helped them do that for however long. Mm. Um, that's just yeah magic, magic. and yeah. and the way that we're having to do that as well, like it constantly pulls on creativity. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, it's like you've been you've every day you've gotten like a new problem and you've got to be the most creative as like part of yourself to to work out that problem and a lot of it's you know you, you plan and you obviously do your interventions and all that sort of stuff but you, it also requires you to think on your feet a lot mm. and that's I really enjoy that I yeah really enjoy that. Well, yeah what you said there about having children the learners for so long mm. I've been with some of ours for four years I was just thinking because obviously if you're in a school you've got a new teacher every school yeah. year but mm. you guys have got this consistency now where, build such a yeah. relationship with them and three of them were on the podcast that you've just done yeah, yeah. yeah. hilarious so part of hilarious. it I was going you do know what book you're reading <laughs> at the moment <laughs> I swear. but those three I've had for three and a half years. Mm. One of them's just gone up to key stage four. And when he was with us, he was working independently. Yeah. He was, you'd crack him on, what are you doing this? What target are you hitting? Yeah, yeah. cool. Come back in 20 minutes and show me what you've done. And yeah. he'll be able to talk through all of his learning. Another learner that was on there that was saying that the learning's fun. Yeah. He's given me some of the best quotes recently. <laughs> <laughs> and, but he said to me, and I never thought I'd get to this point, he'd been excluded from multiple schools, mm. really desperate to integrate with other learners, but social social yeah. skills just weren't there, and constantly having an impact and a barrier mm. to his learning. He said to me the other day, and I've realised, uh, the better behaved I am, the better uh, my day goes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> he goes, and I'm actually, my brain's grown quite a lot, actually, hasn't it? He's now doing his own learner-led, he's doing three learner-led projects this, this week. Yeah. Last week. That's awesome. One was building a safe space. He's got a porch. He's got a ladder that he's got a watchtower so he can see anything that's going on around the site. That's awesome. Um, um, talk about yeah. if there's any, lead any games from his watchtower. Mm. Another one is he's making a Mario uh, water dispenser. So at the moment he's figuring out how to get the pipe to stick to his head. Hilarity. A lot of it is hilarity. (laughs) And then the other one is coding. And he's self-taught teaching himself to code. And he's currently making a Mario Kart. Mario game. And it's just... You look at where he was when he joined. It was... We don't like to do it, but it was a lot of price like restraining Mm. because he was not safe to yeah, other learners yeah. and himself there was a lot of absconding yeah he couldn't sit down and mm. engage in anything and now you just look at him and go oh my god that's so <laughs> lush it yeah, is so lush but you don't get that in the no you don't see that progression and these learners mm. sorry i tell me to stop if i am talking to you <laughs> no, no, no. but these learners need the you asked about what you love about this job but these particular learners and all learners it's very mm. important mm. to know that all yeah. learners would benefit yeah, from this just, yeah. is safe they need safe positive um and consistent mm. environments and we are able to facilitate that yeah especially these learners who have sen and complex behavior needs mm. they desperately need that and yeah. we are able to do that and yeah. it's just you can see these kids that are in a Really harsh, where it's society might the might write off through the gaps, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, might write it off and go, you're not going to be able to do anything. Well, when I did the podcast, that was the one thing they all like seemed to try and get across was like how much they feel like they're listened to here in a way they haven't been listened to before, and I thought that was so like lush oh. to hear because it was like 
Well, everyone deserves to be listened to. Like, yeah. You know, but sad that it's taken them hard long to get to a space where they do feel like people are listening to yeah. them. Yeah. When um, you talk to them about their old mange, and maybe they weren't ready to share that on the podcast but you talk to them about their experience in mainstream and it's wildly different Mm. well I I did edit out a few things that were said because it wasn't quite (laughs) (laughs) yes I'm sure they probably had some choice work I'll tell you afterwards (laughs) (laughs) but um, but yeah um, we've had Chef one of our directors on the podcast talking about educational philosophies and his favourite word pedagogy which I still can't really say um, but I'd love to hear your guys take on this from people that are actually on the ground delivering this approach in curriculum on a daily basis because it's really easy for me and him to sit in a room and him be like this is a great way to teach but you guys are the ones that are actually delivering it so how do you find delivering this kind of uh, curriculum education where have you want to say it well the, yeah as I've, I've sort of mentioned before <clears throat> one of the things that attracted me here was the project based you know learning mm. and sort of yeah learning by doing and you know learning in context to you know something that might be helpful in the future mm. like you know tool based or or um, you know some sort of measuring or whatever it might be and I think yeah as a, <laughs> I wish I had that when I was crying because yeah. I yeah, I, I feel like it just gives more, yeah, more, like, real-life context mm. to, you know, the the concepts that we're trying to get across to these learners. Um, and, yeah, I just, I, th- I think that's just the best way to learn. I don't, mm. yeah, see how, yeah, learning any other way. I wouldn't be able to teach any other way now, I don't think. I think, again, it's a bit like rewilding. Yeah. I think the theories of, like, they, they, Craig as well, our head of curriculum, yeah. talk a lot about constructivism, which do you want to... Do a quick thing in case people haven't listened to all of the podcasts. Constructivism is building on past knowledge rather than passively sharing. Mm. So rather than me saying... The dinosaur. Oh, I'm gonna give a fact that I don't actually know. <laughs> I don't know. Like the. I can see you thinking. All like, I know what? about dinosaurs. <laughs> I don't know anything. But <laughs> that was a bad example. Okay, so instead of saying ten plus ten is twenty, actually physically getting them to work out using beads or yeah. counting snacks or you've got twenty snacks. How yeah. um, so many children need? There's so yeah. many children to share it upon. You build on that knowledge. Um, and I just feel also very weird. Yeah, I don't know what that noise is. <laughs> um, I'll just acknowledge that it's going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one of us. Um, the um, I think that's what I personally struggled with in school, and I think that's what a lot of new neurodivergent people do struggle with with attention span. Mm. Um, sometimes I'm saying one sentence as they're running around in circles, so mm. I'm saying three words at a time. Yeah. <laughs> In one minute, <laughs> we're going to sit down and it, it, you yeah, know, so yeah. I think it really fits with that neuro, the, the, our demographic of the mm. children that we've got, the neurodivergent. And again, mm. neurotypical would benefit from yeah, this. Yeah. It's not just for neurodivergent people, children or adults, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think it really suits those learners. Mm. I think you've got the Vygotsky's theory that about the more knowledgeable other mm. and actually you can talk with the, the more knowledgeable other could be anyone yeah mm. which is what I really liked when I was running those co- the, in Covid times with mm. the learners across different years you'd have di- it, it, it works both yeah. ways you'd learn things from d- all sorts of ages yeah and actually for instance we've got one learner who's really good at tool work and he kind of takes on the lead as being the tool, yeah, the tool kid, tool, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we call him tool king, yeah. Um, and then we've got one other learner who's really strong at spelling, mm. so he comes in with the non, not so, yeah, confident, and just kind of supports with that and yeah. checks their work. And it sounds like it happens quite organically, really if organically. You let them, yeah. I mean, because I home educate my kids, and my twelve-year-old was struggling with maths, and I was like, I, I don't know how to do this. I was like. 
And then his sister, who's 14, came and said, oh, I know how to do that. And so she sat down and taught him how to do this method that I had no yeah. clue about. And it was like, so in that case, it wasn't me, like, facilitating the education. It was being like, all right, well, I trust you to do exactly. it. But I think what's good about that as well is that the learners, we've, I've touched on it earlier, but the learners that we tend to get in this school have, I'm sorry, been failed mm. by other educational systems. Yeah. And they have lost trust in education. Mm. And schools, a lot of the kids that I've had in my group have come through and Ed Senko has gone, don't say it's a school. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't tell it them a it's a school. <laughs> because they have lost trust, they don't mm. feel safe in school, yeah. not always. They might not feel safe in schools, they might not feel like they belong. And actually they have, their self-esteem has just plummeted. Mm-hmm. And so if you give them high reward low risk activities that they feel strong in yeah and that they are putting on across you can get a lot from them yeah and it's wonderful and you can see them personally grow yeah and that's that's the the other sort of theory that's being pushed at the moment or sort of we're being um educated on as staff is the metacognition isn't mm. it and that is all about learning how we learn best yeah um and it's something i think um, you, you you can do quite naturally mm. um but yeah that's that's a really interesting sort of because what we basically want to facilitate is lifelong learning mm. and by sort of you know uh, teaching in a metacognitive way we're going to sort of uh, facilitate that for the future. And, and yeah, so that's something that's a massive um, sort of area of development for mm. us as a whole staff, isn't it? And, yeah, it's been really interesting. And, yeah, sometimes the, the theory in, in, on the PowerPoint is, is a lot easier said than getting it, it down, is, yeah. getting it, it down yeah. on site. I, I think... Um, when, you're, when, you're, when, you're, when the learner comes in and they are only ready for grounding for two hours actually fitting in you know the other stuff can, can be um, a challenge but in the, in the same instance when they are struggling like that sometimes that's a really good place to start mm. um and even with the, the social aspect you can teach that you know metacognition and and and, and the different theories that we're sort of um or pedagogies that we're sort of developed in as mm. it were so yeah. yeah, I do think I I do think it's on for the untrained eye that kind of a pedagogical <laughs> approach can and has the potential to look like there's no input mm. from adults and yeah. kind of have adults sit back and just let them be. Yeah. However, I would say yeah there's a lot less paperwork per se although you do still have visuals and stuff like that it's a lot less off ground planning I don't know how to put that and a lot of in the moment thinking on your feet and then in the afternoon they've come in with a special interest this week (laughs) (laughs) that doesn't always fit your DTT (laughs) you're like damn it why couldn't you have said that on a Thursday? <laughs> um, and it's a lot of the way that you speak. So mm. using open-ended language frames like, mm. oh, I can see that you're doing that. I mm. wonder what will happen if we add a bit of weight to that. Mm. Will that make it the catapult fire quicker or slower? Mm. Or what happens if we make a... so? It, I think there's a lot of input that is needed to practitioners mm. to fully understand that approach because otherwise there is just a lab uh, yeah. with no knowledgeable, more knowledgeable other. Does that yeah. make sense? Am I making yeah. sense? Yeah, 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 it'll make sense, yeah. I think it's quite a, a 
comp- it's a it's a theory, isn't yeah. it? And I think it's quite difficult to come up with practical examples mm. and give like a like I said earlier, like a handbook. Yeah. This is how you do this, this you do pedagogy. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that no. simple. So you no. have to fully understand the theory mm. to be able to, to deliver, deliver it. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. And also the nature of our learners, some of them may never leave what we call phase one which is very heavily focused on knowing others mm. knowing myself uh kind of sparking curiosity mm. and writing it they might not ever leave that um which is fine yeah but i think sometimes they are not ready for the more metacognitive what did you like about your learning today yeah and they're like sorry i'm gonna swear ever e- F- yeah, yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. Yeah. What was your favourite part of the day? When I went to the toilet. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are genuine things that <laughs> When I... is it was five minutes all home time. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I think sometimes they are not ready to have those mm. metacognitive no. conversations. Yeah. Mm. Um, but it's an aspiration, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right in, like, going back to what you said in a minute, like I uh, said earlier, is that sometimes it can look like we're just frolicking around the woods. <laughs> Which, a lot of fun time we are. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think it, it, you know, it, it takes a lot of... Sort of, like, between staff, when you've been in the sort of group for a little while, and, and actually, when even when it's new staff, you've got mm. to build that relationship really quickly to sort of say, say stuff without saying it, and yeah. sort of get that level of understanding and make sure you're all pulling in the same direction as well, and... And, um, yeah, and, and put, instead of piling learning in, mm. it's drawing learning out from yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, so nice. I had, you know, I had a learner where all I was doing for like three months was imaginary fishing in a stream. Yeah. And, um, guess who? <laughs> <laughs> um, That's some of my favourite parts of the week. <laughs> and I, you know, at, at one point I was like, and I'm, I'm like, how is this preparing him for the future? Him for the future? Yeah. And <clears throat> so I, you know, started to really sort of, at first, it, you know, it was really clear that he just needed, like, he, you know, he, he was the in place. the stream, yeah. he just needed that sensory input of mm-hmm. the stream, like hitting his boots and feeling that sort of, you know, that, that sort of feeling on himself. And, and it was really clear at first that that's what he needed. Mm. After a while, it's like, actually, like, I reckon we're ready for for more, mm. but let's stay in the stream. This is fine, and <clears throat> we started, you know, bringing different bits of Bob's learning in, and mm. in the end, we ended up writing a a fact file book yeah. about different fish that were like local to us. Oh, and nice. We did, you know, we did research and we did a little fish count and mm. you know all this sort of stuff and. That was all developed from the fact that he wasn't ready to leave the street yeah, and he needed to be there. Yeah. And actually, yeah, okay, let's, let's build something around that then instead. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. I That's loved really it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and we've talked about lots of the great things um, about the way we're doing things and what you're enjoying about teaching, but for the sake of balance, would you like to tell me a couple of challenges that you might face from working in the way that we do? Not the nature of our learners not necessarily about the theories but the nature of our learners is not all rainbows and sunshines yeah. is it no especially They're when up. you get new learners in as well yeah so a lot of them have got trauma backgrounds as well yeah, yeah so we're a trauma um approach school mm. trauma based trauma informed or trauma yeah. informed yeah um, trauma-informed school, that's what that's we it. are. <laughs> um, trauma-informed school, so a lot of them ha- are coming to us because they have some form of trauma. Mm. Like I said before, the, they are coming from us not necessarily believing that they mm. feel safe or that they belong. or Yeah, so there are days, there are weeks mm. where it's really, really hard mm. about that. The, oh, one of the yeah, the it's... hardest part of the job is having to physically restrain, and I hate it. Mm. Yeah. But it is one of those parts that we do have to do, mm. in some just for deep to pressure sometimes, safe, yeah. just mm. to keep them safe. So that isn't great. And there are times where you just feel 
like you haven't stopped all day mm. you're hyper vigilant yeah. and you even feel that it's really hard then to take mm. to leave school mm. you don't you in mainstream you get take take your marking home yeah you take your assessments home you take homework and blah 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 here you take the emotional baggage home mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah the anxiety of oh my god what a about this or what if yeah. this is happening or what if I try, tried that maybe mm. I did something really wrong there so yeah you have to be very reflective and I hate the word resilient because mm. everyone's got different and you shouldn't have to but yeah. you do have to be very resilient yeah. I think Hannah and I have both been there long enough to sort of see the other side of it Yeah. but when you when you first start and the learners aren't particularly they might not be particularly interested in you, mm. they might be the furthest thing from that. Yeah. Um, you know, you need to build that relationship. And, um, yeah, I'm not going to lie, the first three months here were really tough mm. because I hadn't seen the other side of it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and there were, yeah, there were points where I was just like, I don't I know, I don't know if yeah. this is the right thing, you know. Um, but I said to myself, like, give it a turn, see how it goes. And um, that's what I would say to anybody joining. Mm. Oh, 100%. Is give it a term, maybe yeah. two, uh, especially if you join in, in September because you've got rainy, yeah. <laughs> rainy autumn term, then you've got the, you know, January, February. But yeah, when you, you know, when you've been long, here long enough to sort of see the learners make a huge difference in some way, shape, or form, or if you've you know, and, and that you've been here long enough to sort of build relationships with staff and learners and um, <clears throat> and being and here long enough. at home. Oh, at home as well, yeah. Yeah, because um, they themselves have got, like, that's another real difficult yeah. thing, which I have come from the other side of, mm. is gaining relationships with home, because, yeah. again, their kids have been failed and they don't necessarily have yeah. trust in... Yeah. Our school. Mm. So they themselves have got trauma. So you've got to try and get through to them. The parents and carers. I'm yeah. very yeah. blessed with some lovely, lovely. Oh, I've got some absolutely lovely parents, and I've got. Yeah. But even like when when a child joins us, you know, I, I, I'm not gonna say it's every time, but normally a parent only gets called by the school if mm. something's gone really pee tong. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I've had parents where you ring them up and they're like, oh, no, what's happened? Mm-hmm. So, no, 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 they've, they've had an excellent day. And you, you have months of that yeah. with a new, you know, new learner's parent. Mm. <clears throat> and, and, yeah, when they finally start relaxing you, you know, you can have quite a, uh, uh, yeah, like a really positive relationship and, you know, one that's based on laughter and, yeah, exactly. you know, and... Just like sharing positive, but also, you know, when their child's not had a great day, you can also, you know, sort of have, those have that honest relationship, yeah. like talk with them. Yeah. But yeah, this job in the summer is pretty, pretty good. Isn't it? <laughs> summer once, great. <laughs> once you've seen that. Uh, like, oh, that. Shillingford last year had ducks and wagtails move into which are water dwelling animals yeah. into our area <laughs> yeah. because it was so, so wet <laughs> filthy it's just it, yeah and that's quite you don't realize how much that's taking a toll to your yeah. energy you're already hyper vigilant yeah. you're already playing games constantly yeah and then trudging through that mud <laughs> especially with kids who have sensory issues, yeah. so don't like wearing wellies or yeah. waterproof trousers. Yeah, so yeah. they're wearing their blooming astro turfs <laughs> with wet socks. Why are you? Are, you seem a bit grumpy. <laughs> Could it be your shoes? Shaking. Yeah. So that yeah. that could be a difficult yeah. one. I yeah. think. Uh, yeah, you're right in that it's physically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. It's really physically demanding. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, physically, emotionally, so physically, yeah. emotionally, yeah. yeah. You just yeah. you do you come home some days and you're just like, oh. Yeah. And you t- you talk to your people, don't you, around you, and they can't believe what you how you explain you've spent your yeah. day. And yeah. It's like, is this you're being paid for that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's great. Do you know what I really look forward to though, and we'll probably never see it is that you know some of these learners, but also when we're you know 
not here for retirement or whatever it might be, we'll be able to tell stories about this mad school that we used to <laughs> teach at or, or learn at. And um, yeah, learners are going to tell these stories to like their friends and unless, and, and, and nobody's going to believe them. Well, unless every school <laughs> yeah, cottons on and becomes like, like it, it. then it'd be great. Um, <laughs> I like, yeah, I, we just used to, yeah, we, we, we learn in a free sided shed in the middle of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, just, yeah. I think um, it's awesome. It's, yeah, just, <laughs> well, I was say, before we wrap up, just any particularly memorable successes of learners. I mean, that one you just mentioned a, a while ago about the the kid who's doing three projects and came oh, from, yeah. Ridiculous. But yeah, if there's any other quick, we, I love a success story before we uh, finish up. Well, I had one learner who started here and um, it was actually a learner who's just popped his head through the door. <laughs> and he, um, when he first started, you couldn't uh, input anything. Mm. Um, he all he wanted to do was roam around Sai, um, and you couldn't really give him any direction or instruction or anything like that. He was just um, on his own agenda. Yeah. Um, and that was purely sensory related. Um, and we ended up being able to have you know input with him, but then he got quite violent. Mm. Um, and you know that was a, a real struggle for quite a while, and now all of a sudden, we've got this learner who has he's realised it was like a light switch moment. He's like it was it was a long light switch, but it was a light switch non, nonetheless. Of he all of a sudden realised he was like oh I, you know I can do what I need to do. Mm. I can because he needs constant the same routine, yeah. time taking him really structured. You know, he does like nine sessions a day mm. because they're short and sharp. But he knows, like, and he wants to stick to that. Yeah. Um, and it was just like all of a sudden he was like, "Oh, I can, I can do it this way. I don't have to, I don't have to be violent. I can." And he's he's coming out with so many more um, suggestions and and sort of, and we're able to input so much more. Yeah. And now we had his mum say to us that. Because he used to go to a a a, a cafe uh, based around SEN need and, mm. and and you know it was um, employees were sort of from that background and and the people that would visit were um, yeah people that would you know come to our school and and um, he used to go in and mum would order the hot chocolates and all the rest of it and 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 one day he was like I'm gonna get order today. And mm-hmm. he went up and spoke to this lady behind the cashier for the first time in like four years yeah. and she cried she Aww. was just like and yeah it was just like he's come such a far away from mm. like literally wandering around school not being able to really communicate yeah. with anybody to now like all he wants he's a little social fu- butter- butterfly yeah. uh, who loves routine and, and sort of knowing where he stands and you know his 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 ability with sort of numbers is massive anyway mm. but we're we're now able to like yeah build on his yeah. academic because we've done so much work with his social and, stuff, yeah. and emotional and yes yeah, he's our yeah he's a real success story for for us sweet <laughs> i'm struggling to just pick one yeah. <laughs> i know it's difficult isn't it i was going to say someone similar to you but i think one of the learners that joined us was you you probably remember this really trying to get him to read or go anywhere near a book or mm. letters was my life mission yeah it was the beginning of it was uh he loves sensory bubble making mm. can he do bubble we used to get bubbles yeah. can he make stuff out of mud like peat slime can yeah. he make stuff out of clay it was very sensory based and even that was really tricky. I yeah. made a uh, like a type of punch bag type thing with letters. Oh yeah. So they had to hit and throw because he his schema at that point was hitting throwing. Yeah. Everything he's moved past that massively now. Mm. Um, he has got with reading. He now requests to read a book and he'll sit there and read a book. The other day he was reading a Harry Potter book. Oh. And I went in. I can't say his name, but I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Um, 
I was like, what do you mean, Hannah? I'm just reading Harry Potter. Can you leave me alone, please? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Um, he reads signs on trips. Yeah. He will tell us directions. He will... He's gone up four years in a year and a half. And That's reading. amazing. And he actually turned to me the other day and he said, can I do my reading quiz? Which is, like, baselining. Yeah. Can I do my reading quiz, Hannah? Because I'm going to absolutely smash that because I'm so good at reading. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, of course you can. He reset it twice. Yeah. Because he didn't get an, the level that he wanted to get to. <laughs> That just, I, yeah. I can't just put, like, make a <laughs> picture awesome. of this boy. Yeah. But he yeah. was so avoidant. Yeah. It was, it turned violent mm. if you ever tried to get him to read. And now it's just. Now he's choosing away. to. That's lush. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Me he's reading, he's, his learning lab project is uh, Spanish at the moment. He wants to learn Spanish. Okay. And he's actually going out there and reading Spanish by himself and writing that's awesome. the Spanish words. <laughs> that's it's just. Amazing, isn't it? it's, that's yeah. really incredible. It really is. Incredible. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, guys, for coming to join me today. I know you're both very busy, and you've you're on your DTT date. Yeah. DDT. 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 I couldn't work out the DTT planning date anyway. Planning date. So thank you for stealing an hour away to talk to us instead, and thank you for you for all, all to your colleagues for yeah. stepping in so that you can I'm come and join us for an hour. hour. <laughs> the rain for an hour. I know it was gorgeous this morning, but. Um, just before we finish, I've been asking everyone these last three questions because it's a nice way to finish. So I don't know who wants to go first, but how do you relax? I I get my nerd on. Okay. I paint little Warhammer figures. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, are you 40k or are you just Sigma? Are you just Sigma? Because I love, like, if I could be a hobbit and yeah. live in a hobbit hole, yeah. that'd be me done. I love Amazing. that. Uh, I love, yeah, love like the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and all that yeah. sort of stuff. And yeah, Age of Sigmar is very based around that. So I get my geek on <laughs> and Excellent. I love that. <coughs> awesome. What about you? How, how do you relax? Uh, uh, I take my dog for a walk. So every mm. weekend we, and every evening I go for a nice big walk. I was about to say every weekend, poor dog. <laughs> yeah, poor dog. <laughs> Same <laughs> to the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So podcasts, I like to listen to some comedy podcasts. Mm. I feel like that is a very good seg- transition from mm. home, um, school to home. To listen in the car, yeah. Because yeah. then my poor boyfriend doesn't have to hear what I've done all day. And <laughs> yeah. This man has said something really funny today. <laughs> um, so I do that. And I also am a bit of a collector of hobbies. So all sorts of craft stuff, crocheting, okay. painting, uh, clay, yeah, pyrography pen. I literally, yeah, collect. We we are basically the same person. So yeah, I'm I'm exactly the same. Like yeah, <laughs> something new. Any, try. Anything yeah. new? Yeah. yeah. My my partner teacher, um, partner tutor is trying to get me into doing. Um, what's it? I'm Mungre. She does oh, I'm Mungre. Oh, amazing. She's made some wicked, stu- wicked stuff. So I'm, I'm just having the time to do yeah, it. Yeah, not enough time in there. Yeah. And remember, I, I bought a rug making kit. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never touched it. You can make a rug for someone for Christmas. One day, yeah. yeah one day. <laughs> um, and what are you reading or listening to right now? Uh, I've constantly got Harry Potter on audio. Do you? I yeah, listen that's... to it as we go to bed. You do. <laughs> He's dressed up as Dobby for One World Day, oh, and man. he left our sight. And one of the kids still goes, "Where's Woody? Is he a free elf?" <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, World Book Day this week, are you dressing up as a Harry Potter character again? Oh, I'm going to have to get the pillowcase out again. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and, yeah, music. I, I, It's something that I constantly come back to, and it sort of reminds me of this place a bit, is it's called The Woods by Hollow Coves. Mm, I love and that song. It's sort of, I feel like it sums up what we do here. So I, <laughs> I, if, ever, if ever I need a bit of a like a pep up before sort of coming in, I yeah. listen to that, and I'm like, yeah, this, you know, making a difference here, let's yeah. do it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good song. Is yeah, it? great yeah. song. What are you about, Han? So, I, again, I don't think I, well, I don't think, I don't have a great attention span mm. and I get bored quite easily. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've got a collection no. of three books on my bookshelf at the moment. <laughs> one of them's a Matt Haig one, which I love Matt Haig, all mm. things Matt Haig. I don't know if you've listened to him. Oh, read no. his books it's no, like no, very no. anthropology like about what it means to be a human okay it's they're beautiful they make you cry yeah. and then i've got a caitlin moran one 
which oh, is which how one? to build how to be a woman okay so it's kind nice. of a biography comedy yeah she's done a series i love her yeah, yeah you so should good. read this but it's like what it means to be a woman mm. and it kind of breaks down all it's really funny yeah. she's brilliant and then the last one that I dip in and out of is Sapiens. I don't know if you know. Oh, um, uh, human, what is humankind? Yes. The, the history of humankind. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. So um, who wrote that? Not Bill Bryson. No, no, no <laughs> Bill Bryson. That would have been a very different job. But <laughs> <laughs> so there's... Um, oh, oh, I'll be able to do yeah, it. Yeah, I know. It doesn't matter. I'm sure people can Google it or they probably already know. Um, and finally, why is being outdoors important to you? I like the challenge of it, I think. I, I don't know, I, there's something stubborn about it with me. Mm. I'm, you know, as, as you said, I'm constantly walking my dogs. So, yeah, whatever I do here, I do two hours more um, a day. And I don't know, I just like the fact that I've got to be out, wind, rain or shine, mm. or sometimes not wind if it's too windy. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I think it's a stubborn, in, mm. innate sort of, I will do this. Yeah. <laughs> but also the freedom. Yeah. I do like the freedom as well. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have? I think I really appreciate the seasons. I think when I was inside, I did used to struggle with like January blues mm. and mm. stuff like that and not seeing the sun mm. for the entire day. You drive in in the dark and you leave in the dark. Mm. And I think there's something about the seasons and kind of taking on the natural cycle of the year is just really good for my mental health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I think I've understood what my body needs in those different seasons yeah. and kind of match it to that. So this winter has been a long Sunday for me, which yeah. is lovely. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's what I really like. And also, they talk a lot about... They talk about, like, grounding yeah. and what that means to ground but actually if you're not outside on real earthy ground what's the point yeah so mm. the five senses is constantly being well, i don't know what's the word stimulating yeah i was about to say utilize but stimulate yeah. is better yeah yeah you're feeling mm. you're he he hearing mm. it's just lovely mm. like you said working with that learner who likes to go in the stream yeah a lot of the time you can just sit listen to it. I think a lot yeah. of it is just listening to the water trickle mm. and the birds and one day I saw weasels run out and yeah just the you magic the this... magic of yeah. the outdoors there was one time that there was a massive dysregulation and they he saw the weasels and I, I'd never hold this child because yeah. I never th needs it normally yeah. but he was so upset yeah I thought it's gonna have to happen at some point and this weasel just ran out of nowhere yeah and distracted him <laughs> Thank you, nature. <laughs> <laughs> nature wins again. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Just the magic of just it. Just the magic. Mm. Love that. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming to join me today, guys. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Thank you. A big thank you to Woody and to Hannah for coming to talk to us about their experience of working in mainstream schools and their experience of working at the outdoor school. I really enjoyed talking to them and I hope that you enjoyed the conversation. As always, if you did, please rate the podcast, subscribe to it, like it, share it with all your friends so that more people can find us. That was the last episode of season four of the Outdoors Group podcast. We'll be back in a month or two with season five. And until then, thanks for listening.